I was recently asked if I was excited about Loki dropping on Thursday, right? And it was like a resounding no. And they were like, really? And I'm like, no. It's walking, talking, lots of pie. Uh, we get teased of what Loki used to be and could be, and then nothing again. And now we're into episode four. So I didn't even do a video last week on episode three. We'll talk about it briefly. Um, episode three and four, here's my general take on things. Is we've gotten to a place now where um, everything is just sort of like generic sci-fi. Um, it they they use you know main black lady boss to go back in time to take her take uh, the the not Kang version. He's Victor Timely, and now they're going to give him the sports almanac. They go back in time and give him the sports almanac so he can know how to do and become Kang. And Kang will be inspired by the sports almanac of, I mean, it's just this, this incredible cycle. Oh, sorry. It's Obi because Obi wrote it, right? So you got to give uh, Obi sports almanac to Kang. So Kang can do things and Obi is inspired by Kang. And it's like, it's like, it's like, we know where this is going. And then you have these moments where, uh, Loki uses his powers very briefly to deal with somebody and put them in a cage. And you have this ridiculous bantering with um, Lady Loki, because I just don't care. And then there's like lady on lady fighting. Um, they hold their hands again. Like we just, we keep doing these really strange things. And then the long and short of it is we get uh, Kang back through a door and uh, because Lady Loki can't kill him. And it's like, okay, well, so all of our motivation is always cast aside. And my goodness, anytime I think that they couldn't make her like off-putting or annoying, another episode drops. Like she's, she, she now is starting to look as though they don't even have her shower before episodes. Like they literally just have her looking like this greasy, angry, nasty waitress at a coffee shop that is going to be closed at the end of the month, but she can't quit her job because her new job doesn't start until the following month. That's exactly what I see every time I see her. Sylvie is that, that, that girl, you know, and she's angry over every tip. You could tip her a hundred dollars and it would never be enough. Cause she's just so miserable to her core. Then you have like, uh, well, let's just get to it. So this is episode four. Why even talk more about it all? Well, we're just going to briefly, run through some stuff with you. Um, and when I say briefly, I mean, I don't even know how brief I'll be. Let's just see what happens. So we get, oh, by the way, it's fun how we don't, time slipping never mattered. Just as I said, time slipping was not going to matter after episode one, but they do make a callback to it. So I will assume now that we're supposed to pick up that breadcrumb in this episode. So spoilers are bound, not going to hold back because frankly, don't care. I watch it so you don't have to, okay? So keep the time slipping in the back of your mind because uh, we'll get, get to that. Um, so basically, you have all of this nonsense, and this is it's going to pick up. So because at the end, Sylvie basically just throws her through a door, and she's at the, quote, end of time. And Miss Minutes is there. It's like, I know something you don't know, and you're going to be really angry, and then, like, shows this memory and this memory is sort of like a very subdued version of what would make her angry. Like <laughs> this is, this is the very slight backhanded betrayal and not portrayed in a way that remotely makes the audience like, Ooh, he, she's going to get him. Instead. It's more like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, wipe their memories. Like, Okay. And why is she okay with Miss Minutes? Because Miss Minutes was obviously complicit in all of this. So it's such a strange, generic way of trying to make Kang a bigger villain than he is. And then trying to give give um, Black TVA lady, lady boss uh, motivation um, that she was important. And then you have, uh, we cut to uh, old time Kang. So Victor Timely wandering around. And again, we end up with all this interaction and it's all about uh, everybody standing around. We don't have anywhere to get to. Like, it's all about standing around. 
So sense of urgency, I don't want to hear him talk. I don't want to hear him debate. He doesn't have any technology on him. Literally, Mobius grabbing arm, Loki grabbing arm. We're dragging him upstairs to our OB, OB and KCR with this machine and all this stuff is malfunctioning. We need this guy stick his head in the microwave or whatever you need to do so you have his fingerprint aura thing. It, we'll get around to it when we get around to it, man. I think I need to go for a piece of pie. Well, we're going to get the pie. Kid you not, we'll get the pie. Well, then we get introduced to, I kid you not, a, another lady boss. So now we have wheelchair lady boss. Wheelchair lady boss was in one of the other new um, boardroom scenes. And she has this cool little sash on with her wheelchair. And um, yeah, she was inspired by black TVA lady. So... Her, this lady's speech was so moving, which by the way, is it me or does it seem like anytime she shows up, she has a little bit of a different look about her. They don't have anything sort of like definitively defined or um, uh, definitively uh, set for what her look is. Or maybe it's just me, but I feel like I should go back, but I'm not so motivated to. But this 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 scene is irrelevant. This scene is a, uh, I'm motivated by your speech. You changed my mind. Maybe you can change Black Lady Boss's mind before she destroys everything. You should try. You should try. And I realize I have my bosses mixed up. All right, they finally get there, and then I kid you not, it is. Um, will you sign my book? No, you sign my book. Your book came first. No, my book came first. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Don't you have a multiverse to save? Isn't there a machine literally like melting down right back here that has literally been to the point? We are four episodes in, guys. This is not like the first 10, 15, 20, or 30 minutes of the movie. We are now like an hour and a half into this. Okay? So he just he just happens to have invented and he has this little magic machine and then we get distracted with this ridiculous model that ob has made because and, and it's done so passive aggressive like you know i know it's not really to scale but I, we don't care we need to get on with it and here's what's funny um all of this conversation is the solution is repeating what the solution is last time with another MacGuffin that Victor just happened to have in his bag. And, but it's also more dangerous because they say so. Okay. That's what all of this is. We are now 15 minutes in. Okay, now we have to have... Because they haven't bickered in a while, we need Loki to bicker with the female nasty barista version of himself. So that's what basically happens. And then... Um, and, and, and I will say there's like this quick little moment. I don't know if, oh, yeah, it is here. Um, yeah, this is her snarling. Uh, there is a brief moment here where I agree with her because she calls them out because he's like, I could go for I could go for a piece of pie or some cocoa or something. And I'm like, and she's like, don't we have something to do? Is that all you people do? You don't care about all these lives and you don't care. And I'm thinking, well, a clock can be right twice a day. Um, yeah, it's 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 unbearable to have to go through it with this character, but she was right about this scene for sure. Definitely calling out the Owen Wilson and the TVA and all the other nonsense. Then we cut to, oh yeah, by the way, there's all of these people who were like, they had their own scheme of destroying multiverses. Basically, it seemed to me as though they were doing what we're ultimately going to have to do. We're going to have to prune these things. We're going to, have to figure out something. And they were doing that, but somehow they're the villains, even though this is what the TVA was doing all along. And now it matters because they actually went in and had some lives. And it centers mostly around Brad. Because you remember Brad? Yeah, Brad. Okay. Um... Yeah, but Lady Boss shows up. And see, doesn't she look different to me? I mean, maybe it's just the way they had her in the chair. See, that looks the same, I guess. I guess it's just me. Um, yeah, I kid you not, pie references abound. So Coco and pie references, we're not going to get out of it. It's like a whole room of pies everywhere. They have to talk about it all. Golly, I could care less. And look, again, has anything actually happened, really? It's mostly just talking, sitting and talking. And then, um, yeah. All right, so then um, Lady Bosch walks through with Miss Minutes and basically gives them the ultimatum of help us or else. And they're like, no. 
And then Brad goes, I'll do it. And then they put them all in the box and they shriek and cry out because they shrink the box off camera. Yeah. I, <laughs> this setup, I mean, sorry, this payoff could have been a payoff if the setup was when Loki did it actually hurt Brad and we saw like a limb get cut off or something. We actually saw some physical pain. We saw something. So we could imagine that on scale with a whole bunch of people and we hear shrieking and maybe squishing a flesh or whatever. Instead, we just have all of this imagined stuff because it is, you know, again, it's um, Disney XD. That's all Disney Plus is. It's the generic kids version of Disney. It's Disney XD. It's not for um, anyone else. And then we're back, and then all of the bantering, all the talking, uh, talking, hot cocoa comes into the mix. And now it's not just pie. I need some hot cocoa with my pie. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, 25 minutes. We go on, more talking, more talking. And then suddenly, Brad shows up. And I think this is the shot, right? No, yeah. Uh, Brad shows up and zaps him. So he's gone. And um, turns out it was Loki controlling him. Because um, there was a brief scene earlier where they talked about turning the controls off or resetting the system because Miss Minutes and Black Lady Boss are taking control of everything in the TVA. And OB out of the blue goes, well, we could reboot the system. Like, I don't understand why rebooting the system wasn't an option earlier, but that would mean that the Lokis have their magic powers. So, by the way, they have magic again. I, I don't know. I, this, this show gets so convoluted. Who can keep track of when they have magic and when they don't anymore? Because I'm not sure I know. Because I thought they had to have restraining bolts on to not have magic, but it's okay. So there's all this back and forth and um, the weird flashback to episode one where Loki has to prune himself and it'll make sense later, even though it doesn't appear to make any sense and doesn't appear to have changed anything. And then you have this whole, uh, this is the rebooting. So Mixed Menace is obviously the, the uh, see you next Tuesday uh, AI and this is what's happening, and they and the minute you have the mission, and the mission is that Victor is going to put on the suit and he's going to go in, and during this process they have just a, a big flash of light, and that's the end of the episode. But in the in the in the credits, just so you know, it's very important. Um, hmm. Let me see if I can find it because make sure you know that. Um, because they just have all these little, I want to say Easter eggs, but they just have all these little references to other stuff in the show. And there's a quick shot of Pi. So, you know, Pi is very important to these people, evidently. So, um, I think the time slipping is what Victor, Victor's not dead. Victor just time slipped or something. I think that this is just, it's just, again, this is just the, this is like the next version of Kang that doesn't really matter because we've killed off Kang now with we or we did something like that with ant-man and we've done it before with um season one of loki and we're going to do it again in some sort of way but we know there's a council of kangs there's a whole bunch of kangs out there and at the end of the day none of us really care that much uh, and if those of you who do i'm sorry that i'm upsetting you but the show is a basically big convoluted mess i have so little faith that i understand that there's even a plan to try to be more interested in trying to follow what's going on um Loki just walks around in his brown UPS outfit with a tie on. Owen Wilson was reduced to like 10 lines in this, and most of it's about hot cocoa and pie. Uh, and then, of course, nasty Lady Loki, and then a whole bunch of girl bosses and things like that, and a dude named Brad, and that's pretty much the show. So anyway, that's my take on it. Wish I had something better to tell you guys. Sorry about the bad news. It's dog crap, as you would expect, and I'm bored out of my freaking mind. Um, so yeah, that's where we are. Take care, everybody. I am Pops. Yeah. <laughs> right? And I'm not playing.